Hey guys, Joe back at it once again with some OCR FSMQ lessons and today we are talking about a general motion. Um, but before we get into things I just want to uh, say a little something about the font. Uh, I don't know why the font has changed uh, on my PowerPoints but it's a little bit annoying. The computer did update last night which could be something to do um, with it but I honestly don't know. It's changed everything uh, font wise but Hey ho, we'll have to get on with it. Uh, but the the learn objective for today is to understand how to tackle problems involving a variable acceleration as opposed to constant, which we've talked about in the last couple of lessons with SUVAT and things like that. So there we go. We've studied how to work things out when they're travelling with a constant uh, acceleration, and that's SUVAT. Uh, however, when the motion involves variable acceleration, we must use our good friend calculus, and that's why it's in the calculus section of the textbook. Uh, we can track the uh, position of a particle as it moves along a straight line. Uh, where it is at any time, i.e. the displacement, will be called s in terms of t. Uh, its velocity at any time will be called v in terms of t. And its acceleration at any time will be called a in terms of t. So t for time, by the way, uh, and at any time. There are two key relationships you need to be aware of. Um, we're going to be talking about another two key relationships in the next lesson, but for today we're only talking about one. So there's S in terms of T. Now, there's V in terms of T. And there's A in terms of T. Now, the interesting uh, relationship between these is that if you differentiate displacement with respect to T, so you might have already... Um, come across differentiating other letters, but it's not just y and x, it's d left, d right. Uh, so uh, if we had s equals, I don't know, 4t, uh, power to the front, it would become vt equals 4, uh, which would be a constant velocity. Um, but yeah, if you differentiate displacement, you get velocity. And likewise, if you differentiate velocity, you get acceleration but you must do this with respect to t so here we go let's let's do an example just to get that in my head so keep that at the top of your page just be aware of it we'll also talk about two more key relationships in the next lesson um, but you might already have an idea of what those relationships are so classic question on an OCR FSMQ paper a particle moves in a straight line such that it's time T uh, at such a uh, such that at time t its displacement s from a fixed posi position of O, which is the origin, on that line is given by s equals two t cubed minus three t squared plus five. So, first of all, we we'll find uh, we're asked to find expressions for the velocity and acceleration in terms of t. So, uh, if we look at where um, relationships at the top, we know if we differentiate s, we will get v. And if we differentiate V, we will get A. So let's do that now. There you go. We know that VT equals ds dt. So ds dt, therefore, means V equals 6T squared minus 6T because power to the front, not 1 off the power. And then power to the front, not 1 off the power again, and the 5 just disappears. Similarly, we know that A in terms of T is dv dt. Therefore, dv dt uh, is A equals... Uh, 12t minus 6, uh, because of power to the front, not 1 off the power, uh, power to the front, not 1 off the power. So there we go. We've now got three expressions, one for displacement, one for velocity, and one for acceleration. So if we have any t value, we can know uh, those um, features about it at any time. <coughs> so the next uh, part of the question is the times when it is at rest. Now I've just put the... the uh, the velocity and acceleration equations in a big box in the corner because we're probably going to be using that. So uh, the times when it's at rest, now that is when the velocity equals zero. So we set our velocity equation equal to zero, like that. And then we'll rearrange and we'll get that. Uh, sorry, that line came in there just animated weirdly. Uh, so we can take the 6t out because it's a common factor and say 6t equals zero or t minus one equals zero. So t must equal 0 and 1 when the, the particle is at rest. Easy peasy. <clears throat> so 
So, uh, part three. How far is it from O when it is at rest? So we know the particle is at rest initially at t equals zero and when t equals one. So the displacement is given by that. So if we put zero in and we'll put one in uh, and work out the difference between them, um, we can work out the distance. So when t equals 0, s equals 5 meters. That's pretty obvious because when uh, t equals 0, the, this dies and this dies, and you're just left with 5. But when t, uh, t equals 1, s equals 2 times 1 cubed minus 3 times 1 squared plus 5, which is 4 meters. So um, uh, it must have moved... Um, well, it, it not necessarily moved 1 meter, but uh, the distance from O when it's at rest is either 5 or 4. Right, uh, acceleration is given by A equals 12t minus 6. We want the initial acceleration, so initial is when the, the clock starts, so that's when t equals 0. So we set t equal to 0, and therefore the acceleration is minus 6 meters per second squared, which is a deceleration. Let's do another one then. A particle moves along the x-axis, and its position is given by st uh, equals 2t two two squared minus t. When is the particle at the origin? So at the origin means uh, where the, the story starts, so that's when t equals 0. Uh, sorry, that's when s equals 0. Beg your pardon. So we set the 2t two two squared minus t equal to 0. Bring the common factor of t out, and you get t, and then 2t two two minus 1 equals 0. So therefore t must equal 0, or a half. Right, where's the particle after a quarter of a second? and how far from O is it. So um, we'll put a quarter through and we'll get that. The S of a quarter equals 2 times a quarter squared minus a quarter which equals an eighth minus a quarter which is a minus an eighth. So from the origin it's uh, an eighth of a meter but obviously back or to the left if you want to think about it uh, axis wise. And finally, find expressions for the velocity and acceleration of the particle. Easy peasy. Power to the front, not one off the power for VT. And yet again for A. So it's a constant acceleration um, actually there. So you could use SUVAT uh, eventually. Let's do another one. A particle has the position given by S in terms of T equals 3T cubed minus 3T squared plus T minus 4. Find when the particle is at rest. So... Uh, we need to find a, a velocity equation like that. I'll also find the acceleration. Well, I, I didn't in this case, but I'd usually do that. Work out your uh, displacement equation, uh, velocity and acceleration, uh, just to get them out of the way. So it's at rest when v equals 0, so we set the velocity equation equal to 0. And then solve the quadratic, which is 3t minus 1 uh, squared. So therefore t equals a third. Uh, second part of the question, find when the particle is moving at its minimum speed. Now, think about a car accelerating. Now, uh, this is going to be talking about maximum speed here, but <clears throat> uh, when you're at your max speed, it means that you're not accelerating anymore. So that means your max speed is when your acceleration is set equal to zero. So we're going to need our acceleration equation. So we'll do dv dt. And we'll get uh, 18t minus 6. And we'll set that equal to 0. It's the same for minimum speed. If you think about um, max and min points, which we'll talk about later uh, on in the, 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 um, the lessons, um, the second derivative will help you find max and min points. So um, that's where that comes from. So t equals a third there as well. Just a coincidence. Uh, and the v min, we put that third back through the velocity equation and it equals zero. So it confirms what we actually saw before. Uh, number three, find a when the particle is at the point where s equals minus four. So we set where s equal to minus four and solve the quadratic that we've got, well, cubic that we've got there. Uh, see a common factor of t, so tease the t out, and then you've got a lovely quadratic to solve there. And you get, oof, well, it's actually, no, it doesn't factorize, but we use the quadratic equation and you end up with that. But I didn't bother working that out because that is going to be a complex route, uh, which isn't good. So it will just be t equals zero. So yeah, I hope you guys have found this lesson helpful. General motion is one of the harder topics 
um, on the course and it's uh, mechanics 2 and well mainly mechanics 2 at A level which is very very intense so you know if, if you're understanding this you would definitely cut out to be a further mathematician at A level but yeah leave your feedback down below leave a like if you found it helpful and uh, yeah there's a worksheet down below uh, no answers for them unfortunately but you know uh, hopefully you'll find it helpful anyway so yeah, I'll see you guys for the second lesson on general motion in a couple of days' time. I'll see you later.